welcome to today's webinar. My name is Skylar Cunningham of Lean Frontiers, and I will serve as your host. You can also see on this screen our presenter, Calvin Williams. Just a few points of logistics before we get started. Today's short presentation is being recorded, so look for an email shortly after this recording with a link to view the session on demand. Please share it with those in your organization. Due to the short nature of this webinar, we will not be fielding questions. If you do have questions, our presenter will share his email address and you can email the presenter directly. We're getting close to the 2020 Lean Coaching Virtual Summit. If you would like to see the full agenda, please visit leancoachingsummit.com forward slash virtual. With that, I will hand it over to Calvin who will introduce himself. Thank you, Skylar, so much for the warm introduction. I'm so excited to be here today and share some powerful learnings that we've experienced over the last year with leadership standard work and uh, some of the other tools that we sort of built around this to make it work for, for um, the companies. Uh, in fact, um, really the problem that we saw that, that this work so starts to address is, you know, a lot of time leaders have great intentions when they go into, you know, in, in continuous improvement initiatives and bringing continuous improvement into their company. Uh, the problem they run into is they often don't realize their role in making the CI initiative a success. So I think this work with leadership standard work, uh, the work around building habits for daily improvement, really starts to make it more clear for leaders to understand how they can play, uh, how they need to play a pivotal role in driving progress for the company. So um, to, 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 to do this, to, to share what, what we've learned over the past year and uh, I guess it's been longer than that, but really the uh, we've we've really accelerated over the last year. We've got a great case study to share with you. If I can get this to go forward here. Um, okay, so before we jump into the case study, sorry about that. Um, I'm gonna introduce myself a little bit. So uh, I've been in continuous improvement for about 20 years. Grew up in Chicago. Uh, actually went to University of Nebraska in Lincoln on a track and field scholarship, and somehow escaped with a industrial engineering degree, uh, industrial management systems engineering specifically. Uh, started working and a couple of years later when I got my MBA and even later went back for a Lean and Six Sigma uh, black belt certification. Um, and 20 years later with some great companies, Tyson, Nestle, Mars, Colgate, uh, most recently senior manager of global continuous improvement at Clorox, leading uh, TPM and continuous improvement about around uh, for 36 factories globally. Uh, really got a chance to see a cross section of companies, large, small, even some work in the the uh, military industrial base. Uh, really got to see some commonalities with the things they struggle with. I think they all have ambitions to really implement continuous improvement, world class, and do a great job at it. Uh, but the they all seem to sort of stumble over the same few issues, and a lot of them kind of center around. Uh, leadership not realizing the, the pivotal role that they play in the success of the initiative. So with that, let's dive into the case study here. So uh, I've actually been working and building a great relationship with a company called World Technology Ingredients over the last year, starting in May of 19 and, and uh, ongoing until today. And I'll kind of, this deck will sort of walk through how that relationship has progressed. So WTI is a small company. They've got about 80 employees. Uh, they, you know, we kind of went in and um, start talking to them. I was introduced to them by a company called, uh, an organization called the the Georgia Manufacturing Extension Partnership. Uh, Improver is actually a technology company, and we're part of an incubator through Georgia Tech, uh, the Advanced Technology Development Center, ATDC. And Georgia Tech has a sort of a business development community support ecosystem of which ATDC and Georgia MEP are both a part of. So we're sort of part of the family, part of the ecosystem there. And a gentleman by the name of Damon Nix, he's a director over at JMEP, introduced me to WTI. They were sort of a forward thinking company, very uh, early adopter, um, innovation minded company. And so they might be a good good partner to 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 pivot or, or pilot our, our technology solution. So uh, we went in in May of 2019. And one of the first conversations we started having with them was, getting clear about what they were trying to accomplish, right? Because um, continuous improvement isn't just, you know, copy what Toyota's doing or some other companies are doing. It's really knowing what it is, knowing what it is you're trying to do and 
and accelerating your your progress toward that vision at a at a at a faster and faster clip, right? Engaging the entire workforce in doing so. So, first question we ask is, hey, what what are you guys trying to do as a company? And ultimately, the the vision sort of materialized as we're trying to grow by 3x in the next five years. Obviously, that wasn't the immediate answer I got, but over enough conversations, we sort of crystallized around around that vision and got more clear about what we're trying to do. So the challenge, the you know, the, the 12 month challenge became, all right, we we can sell product. S sales is not the issue for the company. The issue is more around, you know, being able to make it fast enough, right? Being able to, we had a construction, uh, a, a, a production constraint that needed to be alleviated. So the the challenge was to increase production capacity by 50% in, 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 the, in the coming 12 months from beginning the engagement. Uh, they actually had some good processes in place, some uh, some some good, I guess, fundamental CI activities that they were doing. They were doing gimbal walks. This was helping them to see and solve problems, engage workforce, engage their workforce in those key conversations. That was helping. Um, they they seem to be in an endless cycle of chasing the same issues over and over, though. So, yeah, even though you know they were seeing and solving problems, that the, the conversation of Hey, didn't we see this one already? Didn't we already fix this before? Uh, just just seemed to arise over and over, right? And it was sort of getting into a you know redundant cycle. Um, and the other the other part there was that the the progress they were making against their challenge, their challenge being the increased production capacity, their challenge being to grow as a company, um, it seemed to be a little stagnant, right? Uh, they were doing a lot of work that they were sort of putting under the umbrella of continuous improvement, but it didn't seem to be getting them toward fast you know moving them faster in the direction they wanted to go so um so we came in we set a target condition to to so, sort of uh, strengthen their management system so that it engages the entire company in more targeted improvements meaning driving them faster in the direction they want to go and impactful improvements meaning making a real tangible difference in business results so the actions we took was to ultimately um after some time of you know iteration and we'll we'll talk through that in a second here is develop and de deploy a leadership standard work model. And uh, what this did was three things for them, really. It, number one, aligned daily improvement efforts with the company strategy. Obviously, uh, all changes, all experiments don't lead to real improvements. Only those that take the company in the direction it's trying to go is, is real improvement. Um, it, drive, it drove faster, more rapid iterations for experiments and improvements. And lastly, it helped to sustain the results. And we'll we'll talk about how they did that in a moment here. In the end of it though, they saw over the course of a year, 150% increase in production throughput, which was phenomenal. And uh, we asked a lot, we've had a great experience learning and celebrating the successes that came along with that. So a um, few other achievements just to call out. Um, they ran about 32 total experiments. They actually certified five people in uh, continuous improvement or coaching, and they've got a pipeline of more people in the certification channel to to be certified. Um, the other key thing to call out here is they were an essential business. Being in the food industry, they make a food ingredient that preserves shelf life for meat and pro, uh, produce and um, soups and that kind of thing, um, powder based and liquid based. They didn't lose any days during the COVID shutdown. They didn't lose any production days and they also didn't lose any days of driving their continuous improvement program. What I've seen talking to a lot of folks is CI was one of the first things to go when when the when the pandemic hit, which is very unfortunate. But um, I got to give WTI kudos for thriving in CI through through adverse conditions. And to me, that's the hallmark of uh, you've really got a powerful program there. So. All right. Enough of that. So the reason, again, the reason we engaged with them to begin with was they were interested in our software product. You know, we offer a product that helps facilitate the PDCA cycle, plan, do, check, act. Um, and it helps do that at enterprise scale. There's features in there to 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 help do that. And, uh, and you guys can always visit our website to learn more about those features. But the goal was to increase productivity in the targeted area, what they call the dry blending area, by 20%. And uh, we went in and said, "All right, we can. We think we can do that." They, they sort of, they sort of looked at it as a kind of a moonshot because <laughs> they felt like this this was an area that was as good as it was going to get from a productivity standpoint. But 
uh, I look at that as a challenge and I love a challenge. So I'm, I'm, I was like, game on, let's go, let's do this. Let's see what happens. So over the course of a three month period, uh, we went in and actually executed the improvement kata, um, obviously with the, the software embedded in the process, right? So over the course of 90 days, uh, we went in in the first couple of weeks was all about clarifying the challenge. Like I said, I had to, you know, work with them to get clear on their, their vision, what they're trying to do as a company. Uh, the next few weeks there was all about grasping the current condition. Um, we mentioned the gimbal walks. We mentioned some of the other CI work they were doing, 5S. They were doing some RCA sporadically. Then we went through, you know, establishing the next target condition. All right, what do we want to achieve next? You know, what's the sort of the big, you know, the big short-term thing that we think we, we can accomplish? Then we went through a series of iterative iterative changes to to essentially experiment toward the target condition and close the gap between actual and target condition. And that was a great experience. One of the most significant things that we did that really drove the biggest impact was um, going from a gimbal process where they were chasing everything every day, which is a good start actually. Um, it kind of gets the CI cycle started for them. Uh, the, what we were able to do was sort of prioritize and Pareto out the issues that were driving a vast majority of their losses, right? So they still had a lot of issues listed, but they realized quickly that only one or two of those issues, actually two of those issues was driving 80% of their losses. So what allowed us to make such a great impact in such a short period of time was focusing on the one issue really just say hey let's just take one let's take this first one here and let's divert all of your ci efforts against that one right mm -hmm. everything else you're going to try to sustain we're just going to really nail this one and hit it out of the park and we did that we built the ci team and they you know sort of uh, met on a weekly cadence and then they drove improvements and then bam before you know it after 12 weeks they were they were seeing incredible returns on the work invested time invested so um that was a great deal and of course the you can see the last picture there. We spent a good amount of time celebrating success, which <laughs> uh, we had. We grilled ribeyes and I marinated them overnight. Uh, I, won't, I won't go into the details there. <laughs> um, but here's the thing: in all of our celebrating, there was something. There was something we we were missing, right? Uh, I guess our theory, as a company going in, our hypothesis as a company going in was that hey, if we provide the software, if we provide the process the weekly meetings, CI meetings that they could use and sort of teach some of the coaching and um, the improvement kata and uh, coaching kata and daily improvement, we thought, you know, software and process should lead to sustaining continuous improvement. They should, they should be able to just take that and keep going forever, right? Unfortunately, we were not right. <laughs> and this, this slide here sort of tells a story. You know, after, after the engagement ended, after 12 weeks, you know, I would check in every 30 days just to see how things were going. I really wanted to see how they were engaging with, you know, the tools and the process we provided, right, and help them develop. And what happened is that they, you know, after about two months, they started to regress back to their prior behavior pattern. So what this slide is showing is pre-engagement, you know, week zero prior to engagement. Um, they had a, a good executive level strategy process in place. They were meeting every six weeks to talk you know, provide updates. A few people would report out every six weeks. They'd all go through a good rotation that way. And, you know, the problem was that they were having that conversation at the executive level, but it wasn't necessarily cascading to the Gimba where the daily improvement work was being done. So there wasn't a clear connection between the strategy and the daily work. And as a result, their performance was relatively flat over, over a long period. They really didn't see growth and improvement. During the engagement, the 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 ninety day period, the twelve week period, um, we actually start probing into, you know, you know, what are you doing from a strategy standpoint? Where's the company trying to go? We established sort of a pseudo connection there, and then we got into the weekly CI project meetings to, you know, perform analysis, to plan experiments, to start working through that cycle, and then of course those flowed into the Gimba walks and. From that work, you started to see a pretty nice improvement. That's where the 97% came from. After the engagement, though, is where things got interesting. <laughs> uh, they continued with their strategy update. They continued with their gimbal walks. These were the things they were already doing. But the thing we had instituted and the thing we believe really drove the gains they saw was the weekly CI project meetings. 
those became those were discontinued it wasn't a conscious effort it's just that you know reality set in and they just got away from from doing it right and as a result um, they were able to sustain you know some of the gains that we had created before but they were not continuing to improve and uh, that was our goal for them to, to really get into a cycle of perpetual improvement so we had some work to do um, after you know uh, several visits and check-ins with them uh, we realized that the system wasn't quite working as 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 we would like to see it so what we did was said okay let's go in and assess what's broken here and let's let's see if we can fix it and i had actually learned about leadership standard work as a um as a senior manager at clorox they were using it for driving autonomous maintenance for driving um the um 5s work they were using it for checking abnormalities tracking micro stops you know all the things that sort of come along with autonomous maintenance the operator pms and those kind of things um, and they would just go out on a quarterly basis and just make sure everybody's you know maintaining or complying with the with the standards that were set in place uh, what we've done here is taken a similar model and adapted it to create a sort of a structure or roots a set of routine practices that leadership and really folks at all levels in the organization can can use and essentially, it's as simple as setting them up in your calendar and having, you know, the meeting agendas uh, sort of set um, to do this. And what this has done is allowed uh, WTI, WTI adopted this model, and they it is, it's allowed them to align more systematically their daily improvement work with their company strategy. And it's 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 worked out profoundly for them. So uh, the way this works, I'll kind of talk you through the model here at the quarterly level. At the, at the executive level, they have a quarterly strategic alignment meeting. Um, the conversation is usually, you know, where are we at in our strategic imperatives? What's working well? What's not working well? What changes do we need to make? Um, at a level down, you got a steering committee meeting. This is at the management level. And every month they're meeting and they're talking about, okay, how are the CI, how is our CI program working? How, our prog how is our progress going? Are we focusing on the right things? Um, and do we need to provide help or resources you know, appropriate, as appropriate? At the weekly level, you got the CI project management. Um, you got various folks, and usually this is leads uh, throughout the company driving continuous improvement for their areas of responsibility. Um, a lot of it is just planning and analysis, and then you execute the actual uh, chain of experiments during the daily, uh, daily, daily work. And that's done at the, the, the Gimba uh, for tactical execution. And at the Gimbo, you got folks at all levels coming in and observing what's happening, coaching, asking the coaching, coaching questions, and sort of helping develop not only process improvement, but talent development as well. So sort of the, some of the outputs from these meetings is from the strategic alignment, you're really trying to get, all right, what's the hot button item that's, that's failing and needs the most attention? Those flow into the monthly meeting where they allocate resources they may say hey we need to staff up we need to allocate materials you know space equipment whatever it is to you know try to close the gap in the in the area that needs needs the help uh, that can often lead to them launching a ci team and assigning a leader and a team to, to address those issues in which case they meet weekly and mostly what they do is you know check the data check the progress you know um maybe do some root cause analysis, apply some, that's where a lot of the other lean tools and other tools will flow in, uh, value stream map, whatever's needed to, to sort of address the issues that's, that, that are being identified. And from there, um, the plan, the execution plan for, for experiments would flow into the, the daily, uh, daily execution. At each stage, and what makes this really interesting is that at each stage in the process, uh, the, the, the level here like the quarterly strategic alignment level the executive level they're performing their own version of pdca and 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 and, and, and improvement kata and the question they're asking is is the you know the question they're asking at the strategic level is is our monthly steering committee meeting serving us well and if not what changes do we need to make so as you can see there they're essentially executing the pdca cycle at at each level as well so the steering committee is asking the same question what changes do we need to make to to so that our weekly structure or weekly meetings are more effective 
And then the, the weekly CI project meetings are using the GIMBA process and the GIMBA board. They essentially commandeer the GIMBA board for that area to help drive the conversation around the improvement kata for that area, right? Um, so it really gets to the lead level for the for the, the GIMBA process, but that lead is also leading the kata for the folk, the operators or the, the folks at the on the value stream level that are actually driving the processes. So um, what you see is an organism. This is essentially a CI program in itself, and it's a self-improving organism. So this program, in, in, as it's practiced at WTI and for other companies that do something similar, it's essentially improving upon itself over time. So um, not only are you getting a perpetual series of process improvements, you're also improving on the way you improve, which also which is which is also very important for for CI. The other thing to notice here is that what this has allowed them to do is integrate continuous improvement into their natural chain of command, as opposed to being dependent on you know support resources and outside resources. The intent from here from the beginning is to make their organization self-sustaining and continue to drive improvement uh, with or without uh, support help. So the thing we realized though, is even with that structure, even with that framework in place, even with the meeting structures in place and everybody, the leaders knowing their role and having a platform to contribute to the success of the CI program, there was still a gap. There's still a gap in really in the in two areas. One is developing leaders as coaches. And there's also a gap in developing the, the habit of daily improvement enterprise-wide, right? The habit of daily improvement and also scientific thinking enterprise-wide. So what we sort of marry with uh, the leadership standard work is this certification process that, you know, at the improver level, folks are just trying to develop the habit of daily improvement, right? And they're also um, learning to think more scientifically, make less assumptions, test in an effective way and in uh, an efficient way. And, and learn from doing and learn from experimentation. Uh, first level coaches are essentially teaching the improver level people how to do that, how, you know, helping them systematically develop that mindset. And then second level coaches is one of the most important roles is they are not only coaching the coaches, of course, um, they're also influencing or inspiring the entire organization to get on this track of daily improvement and develop the ha habit of daily improvement. Uh, one of the things we realize is that, you know, one of the strongest forces in human nature is the habit, right? Um, when all else fails, people will fall back on their habits. So if, and culture, in fact, is a function of habit, right? If you look at, take a summation of all the habits in an organization, you pretty much have a good snapshot of what their culture is at that moment. So if people truly want to develop a culture of continuous improvement, what you really got to do is get your people to develop the habit of daily improvement. And it's important that it's done on a daily basis so that the habit is formed and, and strengthened and strengthened continuously. Okay, so when you put those two together, you got the leadership standard work up front, the coaching and certification piece as a third dimension. And what and like I said, what this enables to happen is that CI not only is it's it's driving CI through the natural chain of command but it's also getting the company to a point where everybody is practicing continuous improvement every day, right? On a daily basis. So at the executive level, what you end up seeing is um, all the executives become second coaches and ultimately they own the CI success for their functions. So they're certifying people within their functions on CI and helping them move up the ladder of, you know, from driving daily improvement and building the habit to coaching others and then you know some of those folks at the management level for each function will become second coaches everybody else at the management level should become at least the first coach at the lead level some of those folks will become first coaches some everybody else certainly improver level but then everybody in the company becoming an improver again practicing daily improvement and exercising the scientific thinking in their work. So what this has done, um, it really does three things here for the company. Number one is it drives vertical alignment. It, it keeps daily improvement tied to the company strategy, right? If you're a company that has soft, is soft on sales, then maybe it doesn't make sense for you to 
be focused on projects that lead to <laughs> uh, more capacity for your plant, for example, right? Doesn't make sense. It's better to redirect those resources towards something that the company definitely needs, right? Maybe you maybe you take that money and take that time and take that effort and apply it toward increasing your sales, right? That's that that would be most helpful for your company. So that's why it's important that daily work be tied to strategy and not just random improvement. And in fact, random improvement is often not improvement at all. It's just a uh, consumption of resources. Um, the other thing it does is drives the daily improvement. It increases the rate of experimentation, increases the rate of improvement, and ultimately increases the speed at which the company can achieve its mission. The, the last piece here is actually drives sustainment of prior improvements, right? Like we mentioned the CI teams and how they, you know, they're meeting on a weekly basis. By the time they hit their target and wrap a project up, some of the buttons they got to, uh, buttons they got to fasten before they conclude, before they close a project out is actually create a new standard work document. If they can't engineer the improvements into the, bus the business's operating system, then they should be creating a standard work document. And what happens here is on a daily basis, they may sample, you know, let's go and sample two standard work documents. Let's actually take the document with us, go out and observe the work happening. This is the leadership team, management team leads everybody together. Um, let's go observe the work happening. and you know, where there's deviations from standard, that creates, that triggers additional Kaizen. Like how can we engineer a better process so that deviation isn't necessary, right? Um, so yeah, you know, the, st the leadership standard work process also builds in the, um, the, the traditional way we look at standard work also. All right, so the result of what this done for WTI is, you can see from the first vertical bar here, pre-engagement to initial engagement, by the end of the initial engagement, they increase production output by 97% in, in the key area. Uh, up till now, or, well, from there, from the first you know, initial engagement to after the initial engagement, week 13 through 26, you saw a slight decline in, in, in uh, throughput performance, relatively flat though. By the end of the year, right, the second half of the year where they went back, where we went back and said, let's do leadership standard work, let's do the certification, let's sort of solidify your management system so that you can have ongoing continuous improvement, self-sustaining. Uh, they end up with 150% uh, increase in throughput and growing. So it's done phenomenal work for the company. In fact, they've been able to go from a three shift to a two shift operation, even during the shutdown, in which case being an essential business, their volumes were actually way higher, but they actually were able to go down in terms of um, the number of shifts and the number of um, resources consumed in order to make what they make and serve the market. So, uh, really incredible success story for for them and, and great learning for us to take forward. So, um, but again, the the intent of all this is, as with the director uh, Troy Magruder, I think he's on the previous slide here, um, becoming certified as a second coach. As he's you know working toward that certification really what that's doing for them is making their continuous improvement model and program completely self-sustaining and he can continue to certify others within his function and then he can certify other level two coaches across other functions to take continuous improvement enterprise wide and because we've simplified it down to daily improvement the habit of daily improvement in the direction of the company's strategy it's 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 transferable to where every function within the company can understand what their, you know, how they should approach continuous improvement as well. So, okay, so now they've, they're reaching a point where they're they're essentially self-sustaining and also producing a perpetual series of improvements within their business. So, okay, um, that was actually shorter than I thought it would be, but yeah, this is this has been a very a great journey for me and great learning for me and my my own growth as a continuous improvement practitioner and professional. Uh, I know a lot of folks, you know, are looking for ways to engage leadership and continuous improvement. I will be thrilled to hear your stories, hear what's worked, hear what hasn't worked. Uh, if you'd like to reach out to me, the best way to find me is at improver.com. Um, and here's my email account as well, calvin.williams at improver.com if you have any further questions. So that's, thank you, that's it for me. Skylar, thank you so much. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks for sharing your insights with us today. As mentioned sure. earlier, you will receive an email shortly with a link to view the recording. 
Please share this with those who might find this information useful. Don't forget to check out the information about the 2020 Lean Coaching Virtual Summit. Thanks again, Calvin, and thanks to everyone who participated in today's webinar. Have a great day. Thank you, guys. Have a good weekend. Thank you, Calvin.